So, this is Andy from Grisel, and we're just going to talk about, um, well, uh, mental issues. How can we do, what can we do to help people with mental issues, particularly students around campus? And um, the first question would be, what does the CAT, the Grisel or the work officer, what can we, what do you do mainly regarding to mental health issues? Um, so there's the college advisor team, which is the yeah. CAT. And then there's Sarah, who's the college wellbeing officer. So Sarah will work with people with sort of low level depression, anxiety. She'll work with them on developing techniques to help them manage stresses or their mood. Um, maybe a bit of psychoeducation there. So explaining why we get low or why we get stressed mm -hmm. as well as ways of looking at it and changing our patterns of behavior. The CAT team um, is more generalized. So we tend to be a first point of call for students, so that can be around mental health issues, but it can also be physical health, mm -hmm. finance, academic, and then we tend to self-refer them to the right areas. So we might just sit with the student, let them talk, explore the issues, and then decide between us on the best course of action. So I'm the senior advisor, but I'm also a counsellor outside of the university, yeah. and I work with a, a charity doing counselling. So I may be like Sarah and we'll see students a few times and work with them more specifically where I think the other members will tend to refer them on to either Sarah or counselling if they've got a mental health issue. But really what we're doing is just listening to them, not judging, um, not giving inappropriate advice, mm -hmm. just exploring the issue with them and what will work with them and it will be different for everyone in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Um, so in terms of what Sarah does, would it be the same as the Nightline, because the uni has a Nightline team? I don't know, because Sarah and I have said this before, we're, we're sort of intrigued what Nightline does. To me, Nightline feels more like the Samaritans, where um, maybe not for, at such a level of risk, because mm -hmm. the Samaritans often deal with a lot of suicide calls, but the Nightline's there more for students to ring up and just chat. So in the, that way, it's both Sarah and the cat does work like that because we are just here for people to chat to us but I think Sarah is she's going to take it from a staff angle mm -hmm. from a university duty of care responsibility to help the student where I imagine Nightline's more like a peer-to-peer -peer. so I thought there is a key difference but what that is I'm unsure about knowing what Nightline actually does <laughs> does that make sense? just take up calls and talk um, if we notice that one of our friends or mate or course mate, flat mate, that they're, in, they're depressed or in serious anxiety, how should we approach them? Should we just go talk to them? Oh, I think you have some problem. Do you want to talk? Or should we just, you know, s s uh, quietly just act as a sympathetic ear, just be like, you know what, you want to talk, talk to me? How do you, it's hard to open up because you're not sure. It's hard to start. I know what you mean. I think could come down to different personalities. Some people may, because of who they are and who their friends are and how they're friends, may get away with being more blunt going, you seem to be having problems, mate, let's talk. I think for a lot of us, it's more gonna be more like you say, I'm here if you wanna chat, Is any, how's things going? And I think it's, they do um, st some student minds training on looking after your mate, and on that training, any student can sign up and go, and they can learn different ways of listening to friends and not judging or not giving advice, but just being there with them. So I think if, you, if your friend is seem to be more down than normal or more stressed than normal, it's always good instead of ignoring it, just to go to them, how are you? And be quite open questions. So how are you or how are things going? Or, and if you get more worried, because they're saying, oh yeah, I'm just fine. And they sort of don't want to talk about it. And you go, okay, you can let that go. But then if they get more withdrawn or more low, you could be a bit more, I'm really worried about you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to chat about it? But also say, if you want to chat to me, then you've got Nightline, you've got the counsellor, mm -hmm. you've got the cat team, Sarah. And just, um, sort of just be there for them, really. And then if you get really, really worried about them, you can obviously come and tell us about yeah. your friend, say you're really worried about them, and then we can act on it because we do have a duty of care to mm -hmm. look after all our students. Mm -hmm and to manage any risks, but I think to start with it, it's just being a good friend, which mm -hmm. says, how are you? Okay, um, um, if we think we, uh, if any student that we yeah. think we have a anxiety problem or mental health issue, 
So we got the cat team, mm. and then we got Sarah. Yeah. Uh, we got to a night lounge, and I think the base has a counselling service yeah. too. So, and those are the main four places that we can go to. Right? Yeah, you, yeah. So, the 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 counselling team. So Sarah belongs to the counselling oh, and mental yeah. health team. So the mm-hmm. college wellbeing officers are managed by yep. the same system. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're based in the colleges. So the counselling team are a mixture of counsellors and mental health providers, and they will see people like Sarah, but also people sort of more medium um, depression, anxiety mm-hmm. and issues. For more complex issues or long term, I think they tend to refer them outwards. Um, the NHS has certain trusts, yes. um, depending on the issues, um, they do that. But there's also the GP, so you can go and talk to the doctors if you reg- mm-hmm. you should, or since you'd be registered yeah. with the doctors on campus so they can go and talk to them and they can either refer them to different f- talking therapies um, normally the universities are quicker it's still a wait yeah. but it's quicker than the NHS and there is the medication side so it depends on your views of medication mm-hmm. and talking but or a mixture of the two sometimes work but there's those options as well I think if you're feeling like something's not right yeah just going somewhere to start with mm-hmm. and then you tend to then get referred on and often saying it for the first time is a big relief and it feels you can help feel more normal with it and then you might feel like okay the doctors work but actually I want to go and talk to the counsellor you might feel more able to do that or vice versa. Mm. Um, what in terms of mental health issues we like to think um, bit of sexist thing the men shouldn't complain about it just be a man you know yeah. just don't cry be a man get on with it um in terms of mental health issues on campus or in Bryce though is it majority of people who seek for help that most likely to be girls because they tend to open up more um, it's difficult to get men to talk about it they don't want to admit that they, they're feeling down sometimes but it's normal in a way um i think yeah, I'd say in my experience, I've made, I'd see more more girls than boys. Mm. Or, um, I think there is something around men and as boys as kids. I know myself that you didn't cry as a kid, you didn't talk about it. At best, you're allowed to get angry over it, but then that doesn't help you later in life. Mm. Well, I think girls are encouraged to be more open, or it's okay to cry if you're a girl, or to show you you're sad or you're upset. As a bloke, it's sort of, now I'll have a few beers, which, <laughs> yeah. again, can cause problems. Yeah. Um, so that is a shame. I think there's a lot of work around mental health of trying to get men to talk more, trying to get them to, it's okay to chat to your mate. Yeah, okay, go to the pub and have a, have a couple of beers and chat over it, but don't go to the pub and have ten beers and not talk about <laughs> it. It's that sort of idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'd be always open to trying to encourage more more boys, more men to come see us as well as the girls. Mm. Yeah. What What would be the major cause of mental disorder, especially among university students? Just, just mostly stressed from work, from unis? Um, I guess it takes depends on how you view mental health. Um, I think within the last couple of years, I have seen students sent to Lancaster as a top mm-hmm. 10 university and attrition fees because it's a higher fee, mm-hmm. this pressure to do well with their time here, to come out of the university with something, mm-hmm. but also it being top 10, it's, it's somehow feeling harder yeah. to complete the assignments, or more is expected of you than their friends or at another university is outside the top 10. So I think the pressure to do well, either coming from yourself, or coming from finance, or you've been brought up and your parents are encouraging you to do well or you've got a big brother who's done well <laughs> I think that pressure yeah. is a big is a big impact on them so I think learning to manage that pressure i.e. just accepting you for who you are that you're doing your best that the concept of it being good enough within that context is good enough mm. that it's not about oh that's just good enough that'll do <laughs> but it's actually that's the best I can do yeah. right now with what's going on for me that let's go with that and it's just being more content with what you're doing but yeah people obviously do bring issues from their home life from their their childhood years and that's a different thing but I think if you come here and you've had a fairly standard background standard family upbringing 
I think the yeah, pressure to do well yeah. does seem the biggest one. You know, we're going to pressure. If we feel pressured, we tend to ignore it and use it as motivation, just push yourself. Sometimes people okay, push yeah. themselves too hard mm. and they start to have a meltdown and start to get really nervous and or having a depression and they don't want to seek for help because they don't want to admit that. Yeah. They're having this problem or even when they want to talk to somebody, they want to remain Anonymous. They don't want to tell the names. They don't want people to know to see the weaker, the weak side of them. So, how do we help the people who just want to be helped? Yeah, I know what you're <laughs> it's saying. It's difficult to talk to them in a way. I don't think, apart from the nightline, that because they have, they allowed you to talk anonymously. Yeah, that's it's really difficult to talk to the people who don't want to be helped. Yeah, and I think things like the nightline and Samaritans can help because you can keep anonymous and you don't have to say who you are um, but is that concept that somehow struggling with something having difficulties sort of not feeling quite right is a weakness mm. where actually it's part of the human condition we'll all go through life and we'll, things will happen to us that we don't want to happen mm. things won't work out as we expect and you, dealing with that is still being alive it's still living and somehow we just want to either just be plain sailing or want to be really happy and up here one time and I think when we come crashing down or we go below that sort of content line we're like oh, what do I do with this and it's almost like if I admit this then I'm weak or I'm failed or I've let myself down where no actually you're just human so I think there needs to be a lot of normalising over yeah. we'll have highs and we'll have lows yes yes definitely um, and the last question would be we're going to our project movement what more can we do as students to raise the awareness for mental health for people who need help? I think being willing just to be open with your friends mm -hmm. is a really good one. When I think back to being students, like we chatted, but it's normally after a few drinks. <laughs> and it's sort of somehow that opened us up. Mm -hmm. But we also sort of just went through life about all the student years without talking about things that were really big for a lot of us. And so I think the more you can just be open with your friends mm -hmm. if things aren't quite right, the more you can just not judge others or, or and normalise things. So mm -hmm. like if you're having a good time, accept that the, this is a good time for you, but if you're having a bad time, think, this is also a bad time. Sort of, I think if your friends are like that, you, you can sort of say, well, we, we are not going through what you're going through right now, but we all do go through this. So let's see what we can do to help you come out of this or work on this. It's the same as if you're really happy at the time, you, you can't stay there. So you could also look at it, what can I do to keep myself here mm -hmm. as well? So I think it's just, for me, it's about open communication, just being being real. Yeah. Definitely. Take off the masks, I guess. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. That was really quick right. and it was good. Thank you. Is that, is that yeah, that's you? it. That's